Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about Scenic Air Safaris that operates in East Africa, based in Kenya, but also operating in neighboring countries, with the unique distinction that our planes can actually fly into these countries. We don't have to do transfers at the border or anything like that. And then while in Kenya, I just touch base on Kampi Yakanzi and the new Chulu Club that they opened at Kampi Yakanzi. So with that, thank you for joining. I'm going to do a screen share so that um, I can walk you through that. Great, there we go. Uh, so Kampi Yakanzi and Scenic Air really fits into the overall philosophy that I have with Far Country Collection, the whole sense of authenticity, a sense of place, uniqueness, one-of-a-kind experiences. If we're going on vacation halfway around the world to Africa, we better make it real fun, unique. Also, real people behind it, uh, you know, history in the area, people that do a ton for conservation and communities. That's how we can all help, you know, Af make Africa a better place and help the conservation on the ground there. And then, of course, respect for the trade. All of my partners are very, very respectful of the trade, and that is our main focus. So starting with scenic air safaris, as I mentioned, based in Kenya, um, most of our planes are actually based at Wilson in Nairobi. And we also have headquarters down at Vipingo, uh, just north of Mombasa where we have offices and uh, hangars and storage facilities and everything like that as well. Now, at Wilson, I don't even have a picture of it yet because it is so new. We also now have a private terminal. So you can kind of bypass the, the, the regular Wilson check-in procedure, which we all know is not nothing to write home about. And we'll now be able to offer a much elevated experience you know, for your clients. So Scenic was kind of founded by safari people who were sort of like, you know, disappointed that you're in out of Africa country, Kenya, with some of the most amazing scenery in the world. Yet on a scheduled flight, you almost see nothing of it. You know, you just go straight up high, straight to your destination. It's like a bus. It drops you off there. It doesn't really care about sightseeing along the way. And the whole philosophy behind Scenic is not just having the newest and safest planes and best pilots and everything like that, but it's to make that journey interesting. And over the years now, I've seen the feedback from clients and, you know, experience it obviously ourselves as well. But, the, you know, people rave about the flights. I mean, it's kind of right up there with the balloon flight. There's something truly unique that they did in Kenya. Red carpet service all the way through. This was on one of our trips. A uh, little tongue in cheek, but it, it does uh, pave the way. Now, the planes can be configured in many different ways. So if you have a smaller party and they want, in this case, sort of club seating, you know, we can always play around with that. Most commonly, it's configured with eight business class seats. This is from one of our educationals. I think it's Brooks Head in the, on the left there in the back. Everyone in the plane have headsets, like proper professional level headsets, and the pilots are trained as guides as well. So they will actually point out interesting things along the way. But before we get there, this is sort of a schematic of the uh, seating arrangement in the plane with the eight business class seats. We can fly with either one or two pilots, depending on client preference. So if one pilot is fine, we have an extra seat next to the pilot as well. And then we have a leather bench in the back here. On our most recent trip, this is actually where I sat because I could take pictures out of both sides of the windows. And that's what I wanted to do. And those are actually quite comfortable as well. So when you use all eight seats and maybe even the leather bench or the seat up front, then of course, we just have to look at overall weight because safety is always the primary concern for us. And depending on the length of the airstrip and the altitude and where we take off from, you know, we will tell you the maximum weight. 
Some of our planes are also configured in a more executive style. So especially for parties, you know, a little bit smaller, let's say six people or four people, we can configure this in many, many different ways. This is the bench in the far back that I mentioned. Uh, I was very comfortable there. You can easily have two people there, maybe two smaller people, you know, it would be perfect, but it is definitely usable. Of course, we can make the flight extra special. Now, when it comes to the planes, we actually fly the most modern planes in East Africa. And, you know, part of our day job are, is flying ambassadors and heads of companies and uh, people like that around as well. So not only do we have the safest avionics, you know, these are the most modern systems. They can see 500 kilometers ahead. Um, you know, even in, in adverse conditions, if there's fog or anything like that, we have the most modern avionics. So that ties into the, the safest system as well. And then, you know, we can pick you up just about anywhere and go and drop you off anywhere. So for clients, it becomes a much more of a seamless experience. We can also pick up clients right at Jomo Kenyatta when they get to Kenya, or we can drop them off there on our way out. When Brooke and I were taking a group over earlier this year in April, we finished up at a lodge, got a late checkout, and flew straight into Jomo Kenyatta since half our group was flying out that evening and they just checked in for their flights. Uh, some of us were flying out the next morning, so we actually overnighted at the airport and then flew out in the morning. But you can sort of bypass that whole transfer through Nairobi scenario as well. Um, and the same when your clients come in, we can meet them, do a wing-to-wing -wing transfer, whether they come in private or if they come in on a commercial flight, we do a VIP meet and greet and put them straight on the plane. Maybe they're coming to Nairobi later, you know, in the itinerary or they're just not interested. We can fly them straight out to the bush and they're at their lodge. So it's kind of a real seamless experience. Another division of Scenic Air also will look after private planes and all the arrangements that they need on the ground, uh, you know, if clients do fly in that way. And if you have a larger party or a group, we can always send two planes. So it is uh, the, the opportunity is always there. With eight people, you roughly break even with scheduled flights in uh, Kenya. Like let's say you're flying down to the Mara or up to like Kipia. So if you have a party of eight, you know, family or a few couples traveling together, it's a no brainer. This is just a much better experience and for the same cost as schedule. And then if you have four or six people, depending on where they're going, if they're going to to high end camps, you know, like to to, you know, uh, Mara Plains or Angama or Badalir or Cotters and things like that. You know, it just makes sense. You know, if you're looking at the overall budget, spending a few hundred more and doing this way more comfortably and interestingly is definitely a consideration. And what I found is like if you connect between countries, um, for instance, just before COVID, Brooke and I flew from Cotters to Singita. Long story short, we flew scheduled. And we it took about six and a half hours, and I think there were seven stops along the way. And that little bus transfer across the border and holds up at hold up at the border, all those kind of things. Now, if that transfer was made for a client with Scenic, it would have taken probably two hours, and our plane would go and drop them right at Sangita. We'll, we would fly up to Kisimu clear customs, do the same in Mwanza. And since we do it all the time, it's really seamless. And the client just has this beautiful experience scenically flying all the way to Singita and being dropped off there. So it can also simplify things. Now, along the way, we are going to build in some scenic fly on every single leg of anything that we do. As I mentioned, we're in out of Africa country. There's so many beautiful things to see in Kenya. And a lot of them are actually quite accessible. So whether it's, you know, just, you know, looking at Kilimanjaro, we did this flying out of Kampi Yakanzi, you know, fly low and slow over the marshes in Ambuseli, check out the elephants right in the middle where you can't get close with a vehicle or anything. And then you have Kilimanjaro as the backdrop. 
or up north. I mean, the whole northern part of Kenya is relatively unexplored. You know, if you go north of Laikipia, you know, in Matthews Range and Saguta and up to Lake Turkana, we can easily do that with the planes. Uh, Brooks actually done that with two group trips uh, recently, where in the connection between Laikipia and the Mara or the other way around, we build in an extra couple of hours of flying time and specifically went up north and you go and fly over the Jade Sea at Lake Turkana and the volcanoes. This is scenery, this is like once in a lifetime scenery and totally unique and different. The Zaguta Valley as well. I mean, where else would you see this? So incorporating something like that can also, you know, if you have a small group or a family, you know, really, really change their, uh, you know, perception of Kenya and that whole overall experience. On our website, we also have a cost calculator and that works for Kenya. So international come to us, we'll, we'll talk to you about that. But within Kenya, if you like, in this case, a sort of connecting from Kampi Yakanzi to Carters, you can get a rough cost estimate here. But the nice thing about Scenic, real people behind it as well, you have something unique, you you have a unique request, just talk to us, you know, we will come up with the goods on that. And then the one scheduled service that we have started is a collaboration between us and Lewa Wilderness, and we call it Scenic Wilderness. And there's been a challenge always connecting Lewa and the Mara, and specifically from the direction of the Mara back to Lewa. So we positioned one of our really beautiful planes with the business class seats up at Lewa, and we'll do a daily transfer to the Mara and then from the Mara to Lewa as well. And we costed at the same rate, roughly as scheduled flights. So if you're coming from the Mara to Lewa and scheduled, you have to come all the way via Nairobi and it is not a, not a smooth experience where in this case, you know, you have all those attributes of scenic and it's costs the same and you fly directly to Lewa. And then at Lewa, we have a smaller 206 that can fly you up to Reteti and fly you up to Sarara and do a couple of other things as well. Uh, if you have, you know, a smaller party needing to go there. Of course, if you have a larger party, we can take a caravan straight there. This works well because it operates with two people. So you get that experience, but you don't need to pay for the whole plane. And with six people, we typically give you the plane private as it is. So a couple of really good things that's come out of this. And again, elevating that guest experience. And then we also do flying safaris. So the flying safaris, they're better, a little bit better just outside of peak, peak, peak season because the planes, you know, very busy in peak season. So it costs more to take them off route. But in those shoulder seasons and, and off peak seasons, we can create an all itinerary where the plane and pilot stays with you. This is an example of flying down all the way to Vic Falls and Botswana, that area. And with the plane pilot and guides staying with you, obviously it makes more sense to try and do more remote places like Mahale and maybe Kayamawa. We literally turn Likoma Island into an international airport for the time that we're there. So we, since we do a lot of that in business, we know how to cross the borders. None of these flights are more than two hours long. So it is comfortable. The, the plane also has a little emergency bathroom in the back. So for someone who wants something completely unique, nothing you know, out of someone's brochure, because each of these are designed based on what the clients want, and they're actually quite reasonable. Now, a flying safari can also, let's say, stay in Kenya. Um, I'll send you links. We have a couple on the website. And they're really well configured, you know, the endangered species one, we bring in specific, specific specialists out of Africa, we're going up to the Saguta Valley and the Jade Sea, so we can create all kinds of itineraries, and we can use the caravans, or if it's a smaller party, we can also use a 206. It takes a little longer to get, you know, between A and B and the 206, but perfectly doable as well. And then hopping over to Kampi Yakanzi and the still relatively new Chulu Club. 
Um, this is, as you know, one of my favorite places in Africa. Uh, I've been coming here for more than 20 years, never tire of the views, never tire of the landscape, the whole setting here. Um, it was quite interesting. I took some of my best friends there in April when Brooke and I did a small group trip for our friends. And I'm actually staying, you see it's an unfamiliar background behind me, at one of my friends at the moment in San Diego. And we were just talking last night and he's still talking about Campi Yakanzi and how special this place was. And out of our whole trip that included some of the most luxurious places in, in Kenya, in the Mara and up in Lake Hivia, this is still the place that resonates, you know, the closest to, it's the heart and soul as well with them. And we were just talking about it last night. It's quite heartwarming. Uh, so Luca and Antonella, they've been here for you know, over 20 years, probably over 25 years now, raised their family here, very, very passionate conservationists. And it's just a jewel of a little camp, you know, only eight units. So it's never a, a major big place. We have just completed another round of upgrades. I don't even have the newest photographs yet. But for instance, after holding out for a long time, we now have Wi-Fi in the tents. So Luca used to call it, you don't have to come to the digital water hole, which used to be the office where everyone would come for internet access. And now you can do it in the comfort of your tent. So we've kind of done some nice little upgrades, but we're keeping the character the same. This is your sort of home away from home, just strikes the balance well. You know, meals around the table, it always feels like Thanksgiving every day. And it's Italian, the food, the wine, the, the conversation. Um, it's just something really, really special. This Tembo house, uh, the, the, the sort of main mess area. The tents are comfortable. We keep doing little upgrades to them. We just upgraded the water system as well. Lots of hot water. And yeah, everything you want and not going too over the top either. We haven't installed floor to ceiling glass everywhere or something like that. And when we were here in April, there's a little water hole, you know, 30 or 40 meters away here in front of the camp. And we just had this massive lion roaring there all night. And that was our first night in Africa in the bush. And it was a great introduction for our friends, you know, to hear a lion roaring from 20, 20 30 meters away. And then the Chulu Club. This is a, a separate camp that we built right on the border with Savu. And it gives you great access to communities and to the greater Savu area. Um, I did the loop trip from here into Savu. We, we're literally five minutes from the gate to Savu. So my favorite thing here is sort of doing a long day trip into Savu and getting to see a lot of that. There's only six units here in the Chulu Club. And they're nice, comfortable, everything that you want. It's 100%. We're actually negative uh, carbon, because even induction ovens and everything like that. So totally carbon neutral. And the same goes for our vehicles now. We've electrified our vehicles. Um, one of the new things is we've actually got four Rivian trucks there that were you know, on a, on a pilot project with them. So the first ones in Africa, but we, you know, guests come for the scenery, the setting, the animal viewing, and the animal viewing is surprisingly good, although it's a little wilder. You know, when you look at a place like this, it's not the Maasai Mara where the lions are so used to vehicles surrounding them or the cheetahs that they just kind of flop down and, you know, you get that scrum of vehicles around them. Here, you know, they may only see a vehicle once or twice a week, you know, so uh, they're going to keep their distance just a little bit more. Although the last time I was there, we had lines, you know, a couple of feet away from the vehicle. Um, they are used to the vehicles as well, but it's just a bit of a wilder area. And I love that feel about that. And then it's unique going up, you know, hiking in the cloud forest. They get these massive strangler figs. It's just like this journey through Wonderland, you know, things you would not see in the rest of Kenya. And everyone's favorite is this lava cave. Uh, it's this big underground lava cave. 
that we do a surprise dinner in. So you kind of take guests out on a walk and then maybe we run into some Maasai and then suddenly we go follow the lanterns, you know, and go underground in this beautiful, beautiful setting. Um, again, totally unique. And the history of that is actually quite interesting. This used to be the place where the local Maasai tribe uh, would keep the cattle they stole from the neighbors underground, you know, until things calmed down and the police went away or something like that, you know, in the times when the police were involved. So even Luca was here for a couple of years before the Maasai shared the secret of this cave with him. Um, of course, those rustling days are long over. But today, it's just a beautiful experience for all of us. And bringing the Maasai, you know, into the picture as well. This is like really off the beaten track. The Morans you meet here are the real deal. You know, they're not tourist Maasai. They are the real deal. And it is a very unique uh, cultural experience. Now, this is the Maasai's land. You know, we're just guests here and we're just helping them you know, maximize the potential of the land by bringing in tourism and conservation and having that, you know, bring benefits to the community. So on the conservation side, we're very, very involved. We employ over 100 and 179 at last count. So I think it's over 180 now rangers who track the animals and look at the different aspects of it. It's all done through the Maasai Wilderness Conservation Trust. Ed Norton heads up the trust in the US and always uh, has been such a supporter in, in of Kampia Kanzi over the last 15, 20 years. And Samson on the right is actually the president of the conservation trust and is based at Kampi. And, you know, even during COVID, during these years, we kept up all the good work, like all the, you know, we facilitated here 23,000 doctor's visits. And that's how we get them aside to buy into conservation. This land of theirs connects the Chulu Hills, Ambuseli, Savu West, Kilimanjaro. It's critical wildlife um, areas. And whenever the animals crossed into this area in the past, they were just, you know, immediately got into conflict with the communities, take a goat, take a cow. They're so easy to catch. And then the Morans go out and they kill the lions and you get that circle going. So when Luca and Antonella came here, there were almost no lions, you know, because the Maasai just took them out. And then over the 20, 25 years, we built up the conservation. So that 180 rangers, these little black lines we see are actually the foot patrols that they did. And the foot patrols tells us where the lions are, where the elephants are. We can warn a community, hey, there's some elephants in your area. Just make sure tonight they don't raid your veggie garden. Or, hey, there's some lions in the area. Make sure your cows are safe. Maybe put a guard out tonight. And then if something happens, you know, if a lion, you know, kills your cow, we'll ensure you completely. So you don't have to go kill the lion. We will get you a new cow. But we obviously can't afford to just keep buying new cows. So we will also sit down and figure out what went wrong. Did we not warn you that the lions are around here? Do you need a stronger fence in your boma to keep the lions out? So very much for us, it's about that working with the community so that they get the benefits. And over 20 years now, lions have reached carrying capacity. We've got more lions now or, or full you know, quotient of lions that the land can support. I mean, we even track lions off our land now, repopulating areas in the Chulus and in Savu that haven't had lions in a very, very long time. So very, very successful with that. And the community buys into it because they, they get those medical services. They get the educational services. We pay for over 70 teachers in the local community. So they see the benefits and in exchange, they will then live with the animals and uh, you know, find a symbiotic relationship there. So very, very successful. If your clients are interested in this, you can visit the Conservation Trust. You can get a bit of background on it. Or there's something in your room you can read if you want to. And if you're not interested, you can just come and enjoy the beautiful scenery, this uh, unique part of Africa. It's 283,000 acres and you're the only people on there. So it's definitely one of the cool remote places. And yeah, so that's a little bit on scenic and comfy. 
as before, my website has more information and fact sheets and links to you know, anything I think the trade would find helpful, hopefully. Um, so feel free to dig around there. There's lots of information and even links to the cost calculator from Scenic and the likes like that. And then, of course, if you have questions, reach out anytime. I'm always there to share. And if you have any questions here now, um, just type them in for me. I'll be here to answer some questions. I don't see any yet, so I'll give it a, a minute or so. And then if I don't have questions, I will um, stop the recording. Well, it looks like we don't have any immediate ones, so I'm going to stop the recording, but I'll still be here for a minute or two if you do you know, come up with a question.